SpaceX is, for all intent and purposes, the current state of American spaceflight. Sure, there's that Boeing rocket, but we've all seen how that's gone. Yeah, complete disaster. SpaceX is now how NASA gets stuff done. However, by no means is the path to SpaceX's new glory without its own obstacles. And one of the biggest rocks on the road is the government's FAA agency. Recently, the company faced big trouble with the FAA, and this could possibly affect the next Starship flight. So, what happened? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. And hey, before we get into the main content of the day, I got to tell you, thank you so much for supporting us these last three years. We've hit over 86,000 subscribers, and we're getting very close to the 100,000 burger. To hit this, though, we need your help. So please hit that subscribe button now, and you'll get our daily updates, exciting content. Plus, it gives us motivation to create non-artificial intelligence, but rather human generated content for you to enjoy for free every day. Now, let's continue. It seems that the development of SpaceX has not pleased everyone. As we know, to expand its operations at the Starbase in Texas, SpaceX has proposed to the National Environmental Agency, the FAA, to increase the number of launches and landings of the massive Starship to 25 times a year. Of course, this also means the construction of various engineering structures to support these launches. Things like launch pads, towers, and systems for fuel and water supply. Keep in mind that the head of Tesla also wants his rocket company to have the same same kind of massive power as the production and sale of their EVs. For rocket enthusiasts like us, this is a major development. If FAA allows this, it's going to be a big opportunity for SpaceX to take yet another giant leap in space exploration and usher in an era for the entire world. However, some groups who seem obsessed with environmental issues argue that this could be a disaster, potentially destroying the Earth's already beautiful flora and fauna. Now, I'm not saying SpaceX's actions aren't going to impact the environment, but I'm pretty sure SpaceX and Elon already know their limits. And the so-called destruction, as some claim, that's exaggerated and simply not true. Haters, anyone? Recently, a similar issue arose. According to CNBC, SpaceX has been accused of violating wastewater regulations at its Boca Chica launch site in Texas, polluting nearby waters. The news agency reported that they've obtained investigation records and notices sent by the EPA and the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to SpaceX regarding violations related to their Starbase facility. In a lengthy post on X, Elon Musk's rocket-making company responded, calling CNBC's article factually inaccurate and saying that the system protects the launch site and the surrounding area. Musk himself responded to the post, simply writing, CNBC sucks. Fake news? We think so. Typically, Elon doesn't pay much attention to legal issues. But in this case, the situation seems to have escalated so much that he had to speak up and SpaceX had to issue a lengthy explanation. Starbase is where Starship, a reusable transport system that SpaceX is developing and testing with the hopes of sending humans to the moon and one day even Mars is located. However, the violations SpaceX is accused of could jeopardize future launches and put the company at legal risk. Starship's first test flight last year left behind a bit of a mess. The massive spacecraft exploded in the air and the test wrecked the launch pad. Flying debris smashed into at least one car nearby and the plume of dust reportedly reached residents several miles away as well as nesting grounds for endangered birds and sea turtles. Starbase lies on the Texas Gulf Coast near wetlands and wildlife refuges. After the explosion, CNBC said SpaceX scrambles to rebuild the launch pad and install a water deluge system meant to blunt the tremendous heat, energy, and sound from their launches. The company skipped a permitting process in its rush, according to CNBC. EPA then launches a probe and demands more info on wastewater discharges about a month after SpaceX ran a full-pressure test of the system in July of last year, CNBC says. The agency reportedly notified SpaceX March 13th that it was in violation of the Federal Clean Water Act. Regardless, SpaceX moved forward with its third test flight on March 14th. Continuing to use the deluge system during launches without proper permits in place raises the legal risks per CNBC. SpaceX eventually applied for a permit reportedly more than 100 days after it got notice from EPA. 
TCEQ performed a compliance record review to determine whether SpaceX was following wastewater regs on July 25th of this year, according to CNBC. It determined SpaceX had released industrial wastewater without a permit four times since March. It also says that TCEQ has received at least 14 complaints in the region, alleging environmental impacts from SpaceX's deluge system. TCEQ sent its notice of violation of SpaceX last week. SpaceX did not respond to a request for comment, but its post on X claims that the EPA and TCEQ allowed it to continue using the deluge system and that it was operating under a separate permit system. Throughout our ongoing coordination with both TCEQ and the EPA, we've explicitly asked if the operation of the deluge system needed to stop and we were informed that operations could continue, it says. The company also claims that its deluge system causes no harm to the environment. It says it sends water, air, and soil samples from near the pad to an independent accredited laboratory after using the deluge system. So far, it says those tests have shown negligible traces of any contaminants. But the story doesn't end there. CNBC's report continues to challenge those claims, especially when it comes to mercury. SpaceX says its samples show either no detectable levels of mercury whatsoever or found in very few case levels significantly below the EPA limit that's maintained for drinking water. SpaceX followed up with another response on X saying there may be a typo in one table of the initial TCEQ's public version of the permit application. Due to all this controversy and the inability to independently verify these reports, requests for records have been made to EPA and TCEQ, but neither agency has immediately confirmed the accuracy of the allegations. On Monday, FAA postponed meetings initially planned for this week with the intention of discussing draft environmental assessments for SpaceX's plan to increase the launches and landings of its Starship Super Heavy vehicle scheduled at the Boca Chica landing site. Two hearings were scheduled on August 13th in South Padre Island, Texas, and two more on August 15th in Port Isabel, the two towns that are closest to Starbase. An additional virtual public meeting scheduled for the 20th has also been called off. When asked why the meetings got delayed, a spokesperson for FAA said it was waiting on additional documentation from SpaceX, but would not share what those documents are. Although CNBC soon followed on August 13th, the final outcome is still pending. But regardless of how it turns out, this is a major challenge SpaceX is going to need to overcome. It's not clear what impact this will have on plans for SpaceX's next Starship test flight, the fifth for the vehicle. The company said August 8th that both the booster and Starship's upper stage are ready to fly pending regulatory approval. However, even if this delays SpaceX's larger scale projects, the company still has got to comply with U.S. regulations. Speaking of which, we recall SpaceX's previous legal lawsuits. To be honest, environmental regulations can be quite cumbersome, acting as a barrier that could disrupt the launch frequency of most rocket companies. Between mid-2023 and early this year, SpaceX repeatedly faced legal challenges related to the environmental impact of its launches. Most recently, a case was in June when the environmental group Save RGV accused SpaceX of discharging industrial wastewater without a permit into an area about half a mile from the launch pad. Save RGV then notified SpaceX of their intent to sue for violating the Clean Water Act. If the notice from TCEQ is accurate, this could be one of the reasons. Furthermore, the process of meeting the launch qualification standards set by government agents like FAA or wildlife organizations takes a bit of time. Elon has been notably unhappy about this and spoke about deregulation during an extended conversation with Donald Trump on X. If you deregulate, like have sensible regulations, he said, because a lot of the regulations are nonsensical and cause the cost to be extreme for no reason. As someone who's always focused on economic development for U.S. companies and businesses, Donald Trump, if elected, would likely work to reduce these regulations, whether or not Elon suggests it. From what I know, he did implement similar actions during his time as president. It's not just at Starbase Texas that SpaceX is facing scrutiny from regulations and environmental groups. The company's expansion plans at Cape Canaveral in Florida are also under watch. Famous as the base for NASA launches, the U.S. Department of the Air Force is currently assessing the environmental impact of building a new launch pad at Cape Canaveral for Starship and has recently held a series of public meetings in the area to gauge local opinion. One of the proposed sites for the rocket would involve redeveloping an existing launch pad, but the other, a potentially more controversial plan, would mean building an entirely new one near the perimeter. These places are used to the impacts of the space industry, says Barmeyer, Deputy VP of Conservation Programs of the National Park Conservation Association in the U.S. But what we're seeing right now with new proposals is that they're starting to get closer and closer to protected areas, and that's what we have concerns about.
The Cape is surrounded by internationally important plants and wildlife, including Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge, one of the most biologically diverse areas in the world. The Cape has approximately 1,133 species of plants, 141 species of fish, 74 amphibians and reptiles, 318 birds, and 29 different mammals within its boundaries, says Don Dankert, who heads the environmental management team at NASA's Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral. 21 of these species are federally protected, such as manatees, sea turtles, and bald eagles. NASA has been monitoring the impacts of launches from the area for more than 40 years, beginning with early flights of the space shuttle. In a statement, NASA told the BBC that after 135 launches over a 30-year period, the primary impacts were the accumulation of aluminum particulates, damage to vegetation, and temporarily reduced pH in adjacent waters. NASA attributes these effects to the propellant burned in the shuttle's solid rocket boosters and says similar results were recorded after the November 2022 launch of Artemis, which uses the same solid rocket technology. The agency says it also monitors water and air quality that the acute impacts of space shuttle launches to wildlife populations were minimal. All vehicles used in NASA launches are tested extensively before they're allowed to depart, says Dankert. Part of that process is ensuring that environmental impacts from these launches are minimal and will not cause long-term damage to the ecosystem. The same cannot be said for the Russian equivalent, the world's first spaceport in Kazakhstan, a cautionary tale of unregulated space ambition. Vast areas of the flat steppe have been poisoned by carcinogenic fuel that spilled out of the discarded rockets. It could in fact be argued that locating Cape Canaveral Launch Complex where it is has actually helped protect the environment. Much of the nearby Florida coast has been overdeveloped with hotels, restaurants, and apartments. The epitome of paving paradise to put up a parking lot, as the Jimmy Buffett song goes. But because of security concerns and the risks of explosions, no one can build too close to the launch site. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and hope to see you back here next time. Bye.